Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another round of the latest Apple news, the biggest topics in Apple in the last few days. So to preface, I just wanna say 10 years. Guys, 10 years for me on YouTube is gonna happen here within a couple weeks and I, I just can't believe it. Honestly, when I started, I never thought I would get this far. What I was doing 10 years ago versus what I'm doing now where's the connection? Like everything is so different. And I guess that's kind of how it is working online. You constantly have to adapt and uh, change. And it's honestly been really hard because I started out with jailbreaking and, and all that. But anyways, so just wanted to say that's coming up. I will make a notable video for that. And yes, the giveaway is still happening here. Please wait. Sorry, it's just taking a little bit longer than I thought. All right, guys, let's get into it. First thing is iPhones might actually be getting thinner. Actually, throughout the last few years, iPhones have steadily been getting fatter. People have been asking Apple to introduce more battery life, more features, and as a result, our phones have slowly gotten thicker and thicker to where they're at now. And the iPhone XR at 8.3 millimeters is the thickest iPhone since the iPhone 4S. Now new technology from Samsung is gonna make iPhones thinner as soon as next year. So it's called a Y-Octa layer, and essentially it combines the touch layer with the actual screen elements, removing one entire layer from the screen assembly. It doesn't seem like a lot of thickness, I mean it's probably like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeters at most, maybe 0 0.3, I don't, I don't really know the thicknesses of these, but we'd more see this effect in the price. This could actually lower the component price of the iPhones and could hopefully mean a cheaper iPhone one day if this price trend doesn't keep going, it's pretty awful, I know. So although no one's asking for it, iPhones could eventually become thinner and the Galaxy S10 is gonna lead the way. This thing is supposed to be one of the thinnest smartphones on the market. And this patent here certainly raises eyebrows. It seems like Apple has not finished their work on Touch ID. A newly submitted patent here shows that Face ID could be used in conjunction with Touch ID as sort of a fallback feature where if Face ID doesn't work, you'll be able to scan your finger and log into the phone using Touch ID. Now, I'm presuming this would be Touch ID embedded in the display, it doesn't give details on that, but it's just basically a fail safe. If Face ID doesn't work, Touch ID could take over here. So although it's a simple concept, it's just strange that Apple is still working on Touch ID and alongside Face ID, despite them saying they'll never go back to Touch ID. Personally, I would welcome an iPhone with a built-in fingerprint sensor as long as they did it in conjunction with Face ID as this patent describes, it would be such a great system. You could have the freedom of choice or use both for maximum security. I think it'd be really cool. This patent also details a facial recognition system that could be used with an upcoming Apple Watch. Highly doubt this will ever make it into production, but it's just cool that that is listed there and Apple is looking into cameras being built into an Apple Watch as we've seen with the earlier patents. So an embedded camera in an Apple Watch is a possibility, although Apple usually tends to get patents for things they never even use just to just to claim the idea before someone else does. Oh man, this is actually one of the saddest things. So Cydia has officially shut down its online store. This is the market, basically the alternate app store for those of you that don't know, to download the tweaks, the various things you could do with your device that Apple doesn't allow you to do. And the creator Sarek has officially shut down the purchases for Cydia. So Cydia will still exist. You'll still be able to buy things off of Cydia. You just won't be able to do it through the official PayPal uh, connection for purchases. And this is because of a glitch. It's basically where if you sign in and connect your account to Cydia, there have been certain instances where unauthorized purchases were made and it's just this big fault. Because of that, he's deciding to cut all purchases from Cydia. So you can still buy them through individual stores. There are different methods for it. In a way, it is sort of an end of an era where you could just buy things from Cydia, but there will be alternatives. There's an alternative Cydia store coming out here soon. Jailbreaking is constantly evolving. When I started making videos, I think in 2011 on jailbreaking, wow, it was such a different landscape. So jailbreaking continues to evolve. And one of the biggest jailbreak developers period right now tweeted this, lifted my spirits. He basically said that iOS jailbreaking will continue as long as iOS West development continues, which for sure it will. I mean, the iPhone isn't going anywhere for a foreseeable amount of time. So jailbreaking, yes, will continue to change, evolve the landscape, but I certainly don't want it to go anywhere. There are so many cool things you can do with a jailbreak that Apple would never let you do on anything else. Okay, moving on. This is so cool. Someone on a popular Mac forum has developed a Spotify web player for a computer, a Mac computer that's approaching 30 years old now in just a few days. This is the Mac 30 
30 SE. And through some various tricks, he managed to make Spotify run on a computer that was designed to work between one megabyte and 128 megabytes of RAM. He did have to use some trickery to make it work, but at the end of the day, he was able to convert the images through an online tool onto here and get the service working. I just wanna hear what it sounds like, but that's super cool. Spotify working on a 30 year old computer. And this certainly caught my eye. Forbes recently decided to challenge face ID systems or face unlock systems on phones in general by creating an artificial 3D head and then using that to unlock various phones. Out of 50 images at various angles, they combined it into one 3D model which they then assembled and started to unlock phones with. All phones except for the iPhone's Face ID were able to be unlocked using this 3D model. This really goes to show you that all of Apple's efforts and the hype behind Face ID, they're absolutely real. Face ID is such a great system. It relies on so much more than just a map of your face. You have to be actively looking at Face ID. It has to be you, not a 3D model of you. So I thought that was really cool. Apple's Face ID system cannot be fooled by this. And I never thought I'd see this day. Apple officially allows their music, Apple Music, to be streamed through Amazon Echo speakers. And this update was just issued and now it's possible to sync your accounts and play you know all the radio stations from apple music all the music through amazon speakers on one end it is a super smart thing for apple to do that opens up their potential markets for the service to so many new people but that's just strange i mean like how far is apple going to take this could they start relaxing rules on other areas such as allowing you to customize ios more third-party things uh, here and there maybe ios 13 will open up some new doors thanks to apple's more lax restrictions restrictions here. And another lawsuit has been filed against Apple. They're going to add this one to the list. So a man and woman bought an iPhone at 10s. They brought it home and they were unable to get all of the pixels that were advertised out of their iPhone. They're basically saying that Apple's marketing is deceptive, that they're hiding the notch, they're hiding the corners, and you can't really see where the screen ends. Not only that, but as a whole, you're getting less pixels than advertised. Apple is advertising one certain type of resolution, but because of the rounded corners and the notch, you're getting much less pixels counts than they're saying. In fact, they're saying that the iPhone 8 Plus is even a better bargain than the iPhone just pixel count wise because it's not hiding any of the screen. It's not giving you any rounded corners. I think this lawsuit is really far out there. I don't see it going the distance in the courts, but it'll be interesting to see where it ends up, I guess. And even more doom and gloom for the iPhone 10R. I've already reported on this several times, but Oh boy, in case you didn't get the point, the iPhone XR is not doing good. Ming-Chi Ko has cut the projected sales for early 2019 by 20%. They're now down to 38 to 42 million sales from 47 to 52 million. In case you needed me to tell you, yes, that's pretty bad. There's a reason why Apple's stock is slumping lately, and this certainly doesn't help that. And the iPhone XS and XS Max aren't doing so great either. Here's some behind the scene reports of sales on those from Best Buy, and you can see that they're slowly slumping right now they should be doing the opposite. It's holiday time. Holiday sales should be bringing those upwards, but that's not the case. These phones, there's something off this release cycle. I think more than anything, it is the prices and Apple really needs to reevaluate that going forward into 2019. And MacBooks. So Intel has finally announced its next generation processor, Sunny Cove. So this is an 11th gen processor and finally it's moving on to a new architecture. This is gonna be the first 10 nanometer Intel processor for every Mac computer. So that's gonna be available probably in the second half of 2019, somewhere around there during the June refresh. And they talked a little bit about these processors, it's nothing huge, but it is still a pretty good evolution. It'll focus mostly on delivering better 4K and 8K video processing, video playback on less power. They also did say that the graphical performance is double that of generation nine. They didn't compare it to last generation 10, uh, but it will be an improvement, just they didn't give too many details on how much and the CPU clock speeds or anything like that. It's rumored that Apple will be switching to ARM processors in 2020, so we don't have long to go until we see some custom Apple processors in our MacBooks. That's truly gonna be epic. And in other news, an iPhone has saved several lives thanks to a water resistance rating. One of the best features I think added to the iPhone in the last few years. So Rachel Neal and several of her friends 
friends who were off the coast of Japan when they capsized, and her boyfriend's iPhone was immediately damaged by the water. Hers, though, was water resistant, and she was able to call the emergency services within 90 minutes they were there. That wouldn't have been possible without that water resistance on her iPhone. So I just gotta say that is absolutely great, plus Apple's ECG feature. These gadgets are more than just cool tech. They can actually save your life one day. Now, it appears that Apple is still working on an Apple car, or at least software that will be used in autonomous cars one day. They've poached Andrew Kim from Tesla. He originally started with Microsoft, developing some interfaces, working on the HoloLens, and then he went to Tesla. And this certainly points to Apple continuing work on their project Titan, or otherwise an Apple car. And Ming-Chi Ko earlier did say in one of his reports that the Apple car would be one of several products to bring Apple to the $2 trillion market cap. They certainly are still working on it. And after driving a Tesla for a couple weeks now, I gotta say, I don't think Apple could do a car better than Tesla. Now, I personally think, and this is my opinion, that the Apple car, if it were to ever be released, would not be, would not compare to the Tesla. It would just not be as great. Tesla is doing so many things right right now, not in 2020, not in 2025 when it's rumored Apple released their car. The Tesla is so great right now. The software integration with the entire car, just that alone is reason to buy this car. I'm not even kidding. That is one of the coolest things you never knew you wanted in a car. But of course, I'm open to it. I'll have to buy the Apple car when it's out. We'll see. All right, guys, so there it is. That's the latest on Apple. All the happenings. Just wanna say I'm so close to 10 years. I have only you guys to think about it. And trust me, I have a pretty cool video and giveaway coming up for you guys regarding that. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace.